Thomas Demand was our 25th project. The project was called Dailies, and it was at the Commercial Travelers Association at the Harry Zeidler designed MLC building. Firstly, about Thomas. Thomas studied in a number of the best art academies in Munich, Dusseldorf, Paris, and London. He is what you could call a second generation German photographer. In the 90s, there was a whole wave that came out of the Dusseldorf Art Academy, Gursky, Ruf, Struis, Hofer, who turned photography into artworks not usually associated with photography. And it was a combination of outstanding professor at the Dusseldorf Art Academy called Becher, a husband and wife team, but also the new technology that you could make photography the size of large canvases. So that in a way was the background. But Thomas came later and he came to photography through sculpture. It's a very interesting story. He made models he didn't like and he destroyed them. And his professor said to him, look, if you destroy everything you do, I can't mark you. So at least take photographs of them. And Thomas complied. And he found that he likes the photographs better than sculpture. So he started to make sculptures to be photographed and then the physical sculpture was destroyed. So the only thing remaining was the photograph. He imitated everyday subjects that fascinated him, that had some kind of a story, whether it was a crime or an important meeting, he did a whole series, for example, at the White House in Washington. He reconstructed almost a replica of the real subject, and then he photographed it. So it was like an illusion of reality. Wonderful hypnotic works. My wife Naomi and I liked his work and we collected it and we invited him to come to do a project in Australia. Now, Thomas, before he came, only showed in museums or galleries. And I took him to all our sites in Sydney, an underground tunnel, different buildings that we knew. We went to Melbourne from housing settlement buildings to old cinemas, and each time he said, oh, that would be a great site for a project, but not for me, John. So I was getting really exasperated. We must have shown him 30, 40 sites between Sydney and Melbourne. So we came back to Sydney, and I thought, what are we going to do with this chap? And one morning he came back to me and said, I found the site. And I thought, well, Hallelujah, where is it? He said, you know that funny building that looks like a space rocket or a mushroom, the MLC building in the corner of Martin Place? And I said, I've seen it, but I've not been inside. Well, he said, it's a club for commercial travelers, and I want to use that for a project. And I said, well, let's have a look. And it's a most conservative, setup that I have come across. It sort of harks back to the 30s. It's a Harry Seidler building, and it's circular, which Harry Seidler loved. And on each floor, there was 15 rooms. There were two floors of accommodation, and every room was basically the same. And he said, I want to hire a whole floor, 15 rooms, and I want to exhibit my work in each of the rooms. And I thought to myself, how are we going to get permission in this club to do a contemporary project? So I approached the management and 
to my greatest surprise, they said, well, if you rent the whole floor, you can go ahead. So that part was easy. But then Thomas, being very exacting, wanted every room repainted, televisions and one light removed. We had to make new bedspreads and they each had to be X centimeters off the ground. We had to get identical pillows, identical towels, identical everything for each room. The only difference was that his works called dailies were put in each room. Very mundane, everyday subjects. A piece of paper caught in a drain, a coffee cup placed on the street, all the same size, making it the only thing different. Thomas found the last remains of an old technique of photo development using special transfer dyes to make very, very vivid colors, very strong images. It turned out to be a wonderful project. Once we opened it, people were circulating the circular corridor and you got lost because if there are 15 identical rooms in a circle, you tend to at least go twice to the first few before you know that you have been there. Thomas was very pleased with what happened. And he's an exceptional artist. He wasn't satisfied with transforming the rooms. He is extremely well connected. And a leading American author called Louis Begley is one of his friends. And he asked Louis Begley to write a short story about an imaginary commercial traveler. And this traveler, called Gregor, came to Sydney and fell in love with one of the chambermaids in the Commercial Travelers Club and the love story. And it was 15 chapters, and each chapter was printed out and placed in the individual rooms. He's also a good friend of Muccio Prada, the fashion designer in Italy. And Prada made a special room scent. He really created a whole atmosphere. Only about 8,000 people saw the project. And we had lots of bottlenecks because there was only one elevator. But it was definitely worthwhile doing it. Thomas also produced and designed a wonderful catalog to go with the project. A catalog that you open up and becomes circular, like the building in which the project took place. Thomas and Naomi and I became very good friends. And as I said several times before, that's one of the joys of art projects, of meeting talented, interesting, great artists that serve as an inspiration and that you can continue to call your friend.